Look, I'm, uh, Thomas and I uh, did an experiment on optical spectroscopy where we collected data on the spectrum of uh, the mercury, sodium, and hydrogen. Uh, I'm going to present a little bit about uh, how we use mercury as a calibration, uh, and also I'll present what we did with hydrogen and deuterium. So the goals of the part of the experiment that I'm presenting are to test the bomber bohr formula for a prediction of what wavelengths the, uh, the spectrum of hydrogen will peak at. And this formula says that 1 over the wavelength is going to be equal to some constant called the Rydberg constant times 1 over the final principal energy level squared minus 1 over the initial principal energy level squared. Uh, the second goal was to determine the value of the Rydberg constant, which is dependent on what isotope you're looking at. Uh, it's dependent on the, the mass of the nucleus. So the formula that we have for this is that the Rydberg constant is equal to uh, R infinity, which is a constant that tells you how much energy it takes, or yeah, it tells you approximately, uh, in some units, how much energy it takes to, uh, to free an electron from the, uh, from the atom. And then, uh, or it tells you that for, uh, like for some base value, and then you scale this by one plus the mass of the electron over uh, the mass of the nucleus. And the last part of, the last goal was to determine the hydrogen to deuterium mass ratio, which we can do by figuring out the Rydberg constant for both hydrogen and deuterium. So the Bohr model of the atom says that you have a positively charged nucleus in the center of some number of units of charge, and then there are orbits, orbital shells around this nucleus, and the orbital shells are denoted by uh, by principal quantum numbers, which are labeled n, and when you excite an electron, it moves up in energy level, and when it falls back down, it emits a photon of, wave of a wavelength that depends on the uh, which energy level it fell from and which energy level it fell to, and that's what the bomber bohr formula says. So, uh, apologies for the slight messiness of the diagram. The, this shows the predicted uh, energy levels and spectrum of hydrogen for, in particular, the Bomber series, which is when uh, you're looking at electrons that fall down to the second energy level. Uh, so the largest one that we expect is uh, 60, about 65 to 61 angstroms, and that's falling from 3 to 2. And, uh, the wavelengths can get uh, arbitrary, or the wavelengths uh, keep going down and they limit to some value, which is how much, what the wavelength would be if the, uh, the atom captured a free electron, which is the same as the wavelength of light that it would take to free an electron from the second energy level. So the experimental setup that we used to test this, uh, we had a light source, and this light source emitted uh, it, or it excited the atoms of the particular element that we were interested in. And when the excited electrons fell back down, it released light into a very small aperture. The light went down to a spherical mirror on that end where a light coming from the point source was uh, was made parallel so that it could intersect with the grating over here. And the grating will refract the light based on wavelength. And so by angling the grating, you can change what wavelength you're looking at. And the, the grating reflects light, the light back to the mirror over there, which then focuses it back to a point. And the PMT, the photomultiplier tube, will take this light and if it's 
uh, sufficiently strong so if the light is interfering, interfering constructively, then it will, uh, I believe it will emit a signal that the computer gets. Uh, so the mercury spectrum was the part of my presentation that did not make it into uh, my presentation. Uh, so instead I'll explain how I plan to do, or how we used or will use the mercury calibration for this because I didn't get a chance to do the mercury calibration yet. So the reason we need a calibration is because the spectrometer is not precisely accurate. It gives you a reading in angstroms for what the grading position is or what the grading angle is. But it's not accurate. It's off by uh, somewhere between 0 and 30 angstroms or so. And the, so what we did is we took a spectrum of lots of peaks. We took data on where lots of peaks were in the mercury spectrum. And by looking at a reference that tells us where the peaks in the mercury spectrum are, we can see which peaks that we found were closest to these, uh, making sure that the strong peaks that we found are also relatively strong peaks in the data, or sorry, in the reference book. And then we can make sure that all the other peaks in the reference book fall roughly into place with the peaks that we found. We intend to, or we have, uh, or Thomas has, I intend to fit this to a, um, to a line that will correlate where, what the angstrom reading on the spectrometer is to what the actual wavelength should be. So, uh, what, so we all, the, in addition to the mercury spectrum, we took the peaks where we expected the peaks for the bomber series to be for hydrogen and deuterium. Because the deuterium tube contained both deuterium and hydrogen, we were able to get all of the data necessary from just the deuterium tube. Uh, so the large peak over here is one of the peaks from the bomber series for deuterium. And the smaller peak over there is the same peak from hydrogen. So if you take all of these, uh, and this is all, this is without correcting lambda. So these will be off by uh, a decent amount. So if you take the, um, if you do this for all of the peaks that we looked at in the Bomber series, uh, this is the plot that you get. Notice that the residuals are systematic. I believe this is because I have yet to correct for the, um, for how the spectrometer is off. Uh, and also, the high squared reduce is gigantic. Again, I believe because I have yet to correct for the, uh, for the spectrometer reading. The, but if you look at it visually, it roughly fits this shape. And the residuals look approximately quadratic which is, or perhaps one over quadratic, which is what this curve is. So it seems reasonable that if you shift the values over by the, uh, by the right amount, or perhaps by a slightly linear amount instead of a constant amount, uh, it seems reasonable that you'll get uh, more random residuals and a much better value. Uh, this is the same plot for deuterium. Uh, it looks very similar. The, uh, Rydberg constant values are slightly different. And so we can take our values for the Rydberg constant and divide them. And because the formula before had that the Rydberg constant is equal to R infinity over uh, 1 plus mass of the electron plus mass of the nucleus, by dividing them, the R infinities cancel out. And so we can find the ratio of uh, 1 plus mass of the electron over mass of the isotope to one plus mass of, or one plus mass of the electron over mass of deuterium over one plus mass of the electron over mass of hydrogen. And the book value for this is 0.99972. Uh, and the value that we got for this is 0.9997 plus or minus 0.01. So, uh, 
even with the um, the error that we got from having, or the error that I had from not yet having time to correct the um, the wavelengths, we still got a very a value that is very close to the book value for uh, this ratio. Thank you.